Hi, welcome back to my channel. Got a, gonna cook up a real treat for you today. This is, I guess you'd kind of call it uh, Midwest farmer soul food. <laughs> it's kind of a comfort food. It's easy to do. It's tasty. Um, something that everybody loves. I can't get enough of it. I eat it two or three times a week when I have it on hand. I usually make a big batch and then I put some in individual batches in little bags and freeze them. And so I got it all the time. A lot of folks call it made rights. A lot of folks call it sloppy joes but don't matter what you call it it's just darn good i've been eating this stuff for about 50 years now um first time first time i tried this recipe now they had made rights at school when i was growing up and that was good but this stuff is just something else and it's so simple and easy to make you're gonna love it and i tell you when i when i met my wife in 1971 her mom had been working at a restaurant, just a little restaurant in a little town in Southeast Iowa, and they was making this recipe, and it is the best I've ever eaten, and it's so easy. So stay tuned, you're gonna love this. I'll, I'll put the ingredients and everything in a list on the bottom of the page when I get all done, but just watch, and it's so simple, you can't really mess it up. So uh, before we get started, don't remember, don't forget, before we get started, don't forget, if, it, if you like this, if it does anything for you, hit like down there. And if you want to see more, hit subscribe and it'll, it'll help us uh, help, help other people find us. It'll, it'll just uh, get us a little bit better search results and, and uh, we appreciate your support. So sit tight now. Here we go. We're going to make this stuff. Okay, here we go. Now, you notice I got a pretty good sized skillet because this actually, like I said, it was made, it was for a small restaurant. The original recipe calls for three pounds of hamburger. Of course, you can, you know, you can cut that down and just cut the rest of the ingredients accordingly. Um, but uh, I used to make a big batch, like I said, freeze some, refrigerate some, eat it for a long time. Now, we're going to get the old fire going here. I like to like to have the stove about a medium medium or a little above heat and you want your hamburger to be, to be cold when you put it in here because it just it crumbles better when it's cold open this up this is 80 percent i like to use 80 percent burger it gives you just about the right amount of fat and sometimes when you get less than 80 percent it can get kind of just the texture can get kind of mealy and stuff and if you get leaner than that why a lot of times it can be kind of tough and chewy and, and dry so this works out just really good our local grocery store here whenever their roasts have been in the freezer case a little bit longer than what they want they uh take and grind them into hamburger and that makes a wonderful hamburger i'll tell you what okay there's our ground beef now at this point i usually just kind of add a little salt and pepper just season the taste you know if the doctor's got you on low salt you won't want this much salt you might want more just experiment with it until you get what you want. Got the pepper going in. Now I just got this. This is one of these, uh, I, I call it a burger chopper. I'm not sure what it is, what you call it, but it's wonderful for getting chopping up those chunks of hamburger. And uh, you want it, you want it crumbled up pretty fine. You want your burger crumbled up pretty fine because, uh, for one thing, the flavors of the seasonings will go through it better that way. But also, if you got big old chunks of hamburger in there, they don't like to stay on the button too well. So we're gonna brown this, and we're just gonna keep browning it for a while, and uh, I'll be back. Now that hamburger's brown, and while it's doing that. You want to run over and get yourself a nice big onion the recipe calls for a medium size onion but uh i like a lot of onion in mine so i got i try to get a bigger one if i can now by the way I, the recipe called for three pounds of hamburger i'm a little light here this is actually two and three quarter pounds i'll just adjust back on the liquids a little bit and, and it, it'll work out fine this is not uh, rocket science so you can change things around to suit yourself 
I'll chop this onion up. I like my onion a little bit coarse, so I do it by hand. I do make a little mess when I cook. I just stir this now and again as it's browning. Yeah, that's crumbling up nice. Okay, we'll be back in a bit. Okay, you, you'll notice we're getting what looks like a lot of liquid here in this. And actually, most of that is act, is just water out of that came out of the meat. Uh, there is some fat in it. But most of that will actually cook away before we uh, get to a point where it could become troublesome. So we'll just keep browning that, keep cooking it down. Now I'm going to use this thing again and kind of make my chunks a little smaller again. This is so easy to do this with recommend you get you one of these. I'll try to, to uh, see if I can find one online and put a link for you if I can find it. If you don't have one of those, you can just use like a rubber scraper or something, you know, and just keep chopping it. Chop it as you're stirring it. Now that we've gotten to the point where all those chunks are browned on the outside, it won't be sticking together anymore, so we can kind of retire this thing now for the rest of the trip. I don't know if they eat these things everywhere or not, but in the Midwest, this is like one of the staples of the... <laughs> of the, the community. You go to any any uh, farm auction or anything like that, there's always a, somebody set up selling made rights and there's 150 different ways of making them and they call them different things, but uh, it's just something that, it, it, like I said, it's like it's like soul food for, for, the, for the Midwest farmer or uh, I guess like gumbo for a, for a Louisiana. We just, uh, something we gotta have. going to let that cook a little longer okay as you can see most of our moisture has been cooked up we could drain a little of that if we wanted to but i think we're just pretty good there yet so now what we're going to do is we're going to dump all these onions in there get them cooked in a bit want to cook this now until these are just nice and translucent there we go I do like my onions. I want to stir these occasionally so they don't st stick stick to the bottom and burn. And also, I want them to kind of cook evenly. So we'll just keep a stirring. Yeah, there we go. See how those are nice and translucent now. Most of our liquid is gone. So we're pretty well ready to go. Now you could have, if you want to do some variations on this, you could have chopped up some green onions in there when I put the onion or green peppers. When I put the onions in, you can put in some green peppers or red peppers or there's a lot of different things you can do to just make it your own. And I encourage you to do that. If you like garlic, put a little garlic in it, you know, whatever. Okay, what I'm gonna do right now. Since we don't have to drain any liquid, this is a cup of tomato juice. Dump that in there. And this one 
is three quarters of a cup of ketchup, just plain old ketchup like you put on your hamburger or your hot dog. I'm gonna stir that in there. One cup of tomato juice, three quarter cups of ketchup. That's for three pounds of hamburger. And you know, when you get to the end of it, you can, if you got a smaller batch of hamburger, you just adjust it accordingly. Now, something I like to do here is just a touch of liquid smoke or some smoked paprika, maybe a half a teaspoon or so. Just give it that little bit of smoky flavor. The recipe calls for a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce, and I just kind of play that by ear too. I throw it on there and I usually taste a little bit of it until I get, to get it to where I want it. And then just, this is not in the original recipe, but just to give it a little bit more body, I like to put in just a tiny bit of mustard. That's plenty. Doesn't take very much mustard to go a long ways. There we go. Now we're going to turn that down a little bit and we're going to let it simmer for about 20 minutes. Now you can eat it just like right now and sometimes when we're in a hurry and really hungry we'll do that but it tastes better if you let it simmer for a while and kind of get all those flavors married together. So we'll turn the fire down and just let it do its thing. Now one more thing you notice we've still got quite a bit of liquid here and some of that will still disappear. But the recipe calls for four tablespoons of flour. Now, I have never put that much in it, but I will put a little in once in a while just to kind of stick it together. And soak up some liquid. And it makes it hold together better too when you go to put it in a sandwich or something. Gives it a little bit more body. I'm going to stir that in really good. There's plenty of fat in there. You know, flour won't cook without fat. We got plenty of fat in there to cook that in, and it'll become just a nice thickening or a roux. And we're just going to let that simmer now. Let that flour cook, and I'll get ready for the next stage of the game here. Okay, look how that's richened up. All those onions have just kind of blended into the meat. We got all that, most of that moisture soaked up. And boy, that looks good. We're going to, while that's finished up, we'll let, let it simmer just a few more seconds or minutes here just to, like I said, marry the flavors. In the meantime, we're going to go to step two, which is the best way to eat this is on a toasted bun. Now, of course, you can eat it without that. You can eat it on just bread. I even eat it just uh, put a spoonful of it on top of a baked potato sometimes or, or in my scrambled eggs or whatever. But love a toasted bun. Now, I don't have any hamburger buns today. I do have a hoagie bun. So I'm going to toast this rascal up. I, don't, I guess I didn't mention, I don't know if you noticed, I buttered the top of that. So it's just kind of like a toasted cheese sandwich. Now you can use, you know, if you're watching your fats or what kind of fats you're eating and stuff, you can put olive oil on there or whatever you want. But, hey, let's face it. I mean, we're eating made rights here. <laughs> we got no business being concerned about our fat intake at this point. Okay. So we're going to toast this rascal up with some butter on it. And as soon as that's done, we're going to put us together a wonderful sandwich. Okay, fire's out. We got this beautifully toasted bun. I, we're going to put some of this. Ooh, that looks good. 
what keeps the farmers coming back to the house. Well, that and the farmer's wife. Since I don't have a hamburger bun today, we're going to take this one step further and show you my second favorite dish. The Coney Dog, right there. That is wonderful. Mmm. That is one wonderful sandwich. Midwest Farmer Country Food. Courtesy of Shorty's Tasty Freeze. Circa 1972. And still the best darn sandwich around. If you like this video, hit like. If you want to see more, hit subscribe. Share it with your friends. Hey, God bless you. Enjoy your sandwich. Bye.